Hey friends, welcome to Living the KG Life, a pixie dust filled podcast. On today's episode, we have Lauren with us from RTR Travel, who's going to talk all about the magic of planning a Disney vacation. So stick around, it's going to be great. Lauren, thank you so, so much for joining us today. I'm going to have you kick us off and tell us who you are and what you do. Oh, awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to chat with you. My name is Lauren Regan. I work for a travel agency. You're coming to us because you want your vacation to start off in a relaxed way, um, but also planning a vacation is your road to relaxation, so it kind of has a dual meaning. I am the agency's uh, Walt Disney World manager, so I'm the person responsible for making sure that all of the agents are up to date on everything Disney, all Disney news, and I'm also just a really big Disney fan in general, so that's a little about me. I love it. So do you remember either your earliest Disney memory or what was it about Disney that made you fall in love back in the day? So I was thinking about this. So I do not remember my first trip to Disney. I was four-ish years old yep. um, and I really have no memory of it. But I do remember the second trip that we took to Disney because that was with my best friend's family and my family. And so there's a few things that stand out from that trip, but my fondest air quotes memory of that trip was we actually ate at Cinderella's Royal Table. And I think I was about eight years old. When we got to the restaurant, they handed out these like personalized menus. And I got really mad because my mom wouldn't let me hold the menu or like something <laughs> ridiculous. And I was so upset. And like my best friend was like off in the corner with her menu. And I wasn't allowed to have my menu. And I didn't understand why my mom was being so mean to me. And I was like sulking in the corner. Um, you can actually see it like in the picture of like me and my sister in Cinderella, like my sister's longingly like gazing lovingly into Cinderella's eyes and I'm just kind of sitting there and it was because they told the restaurant that it was my birthday and so the top of the menu had Lauren's birthday dinner written on the top and my parents didn't want to tell me and ruined the surprise <laughs> and so I was thinking back I was like oh wow I was such a brat but yeah so that's probably my earliest Disney memory <laughs> which is so funny because I feel like especially if you were that young to have like the opposite impact of like, I don't want that versus no, other kids yeah. would be like, give me my name on the menu. I want to see it all. Right. Exactly. I was just, I think I was just having a day. You know, we all have them. <laughs> so in yep. looking at your trips over life, was there anything about either traveling to Disney World or the Walt Disney Company as a whole that made you just really love Disney as a whole? So, you know, I took a bunch of trips when I was younger and then I didn't go to Disney for a long time there was a long stretch and like I really want to go to Disney no one wants to go with me so we took our first trip together in October of 2012 and I think that was what like made me fall in love with Disney was we had such a good time we just did whatever we wanted ate drank acted like teenagers, like running around doing silly things. I think that's probably when I fell in love with Disney. I always liked Disney. And like I said, I had been wanting to go to the parks as an adult for a while and just couldn't rustle up people to go with. Yeah. So, you know, that's really what made me fall in love with Disney. That's amazing. It's been so interesting talking to people on the podcast of like, they have these really early memories as kids. And then it's kind of like this resurgence that happens when you're an adult and you're like, I just want to yeah. go. And then it's all over from there. Yeah. And and there are people that, that grow up going to Disney, you know, every year, every couple of years. And, yep. you know, they certainly have their own stories, but you know, it is funny seeing the, the people that sort of found Disney again yep. later on and, you know, became Disney adults. <laughs> yep. Proud one right over here. I, I love it. Now, so what made you decide to become a vacation planner? So back in 2016, I was working at a job that I absolutely detested and was trying to think of something that I could do sort of on the side or, you know, something to occupy my time. And I was in all of these Disney Facebook groups and I saw all of these people posting about, you know, working with their Disney travel agent or their Disney planner. And so I was like, well, that, that sounds fun. That sounds like something I could do. That's how I ended up meeting Crystal, who owns the agency that I work for, was in a Disney Facebook group. 
because I had just sort of put it out there saying, this sounds like something I interest, would be interested in. Uh, is there anybody who's hiring or can I talk to somebody about this? And she was one of the agents that I ended up interviewing with after that. And so it all kind of worked out really quickly, but it was really born out of this desire to want to do something more exciting and more fun than the terrible job that I was working <laughs> Well, and I love that also you found it in a Facebook group because that's how we connected in a Facebook group. And I was saying right before we started recording too, I feel like in that particular group, you are like the person that everyone thinks about when they think about <laughs> vacation planning, promos, things come up. Everyone will just like start tagging you and be like, hey, Lauren, what's up? You're the one that has all the info. So I love that it all comes back to a Facebook group. Yeah. I mean, Facebook has, and social media in general have had a huge impact on my business in particular, you know, not- yeah. Every travel agent has the same business model. But when I started doing this, I relied heavily on social media to promote myself. And that's how I got a lot of my initial clients mm -hmm. was through, you know, my friends and family sharing that I was doing this now. And then from there, I've gotten a lot of referrals from past clients and things like that. I certainly still get a ton of referrals from Facebook, yeah. <laughs> but it's probably not my main source of clients anymore but Facebook is where I started I will you know always be on Facebook I am not the person who you know you know like I like to help people whether you're my client or not so if it's a really basic question that I can help answer or if you know news is coming out or something like that like I enjoy sharing that with people yeah just because I love talking about Disney Yep. I love that. So why don't you give everyone kind of a, a quick overview because we've had some planners on already, but give us kind of the scoop on how does it work planning a vacation for you and for the guest? Yeah. So I work really hard to get to know my clients and to plan the best possible trip for them because there are so many decisions that need to go into planning a Disney vacation and not everyone's vacation is going to look the same. Yep. I really try to get everybody on the phone at least once in the beginning to talk through things because I feel like that is how I learn about my clients. I learn about their families and figure out what's going to work best for them. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you know, I help plan everything from, you know, the initial package to dining reservations, advising them on, you know, keeping them up to date on any news or updates or anything that they need to know troubleshooting any issues, you know, Disney is not perfect. I love them, but yeah. they're not perfect. So things happen, Yep. you know, helping to troubleshoot any of that kind of stuff and, you know, just being there during their vacation to answer questions. Like if they get stuck or they need assistance on something. Yep. Absolutely. So what kind of vacations can you book or can someone book with you if they're looking to go on a vacation? Yeah. So I know I talk a lot about Disney, but I am not just a Disney fan focus with led itself, you know, to, to me being able to plan other types of trips for people, you know, as clients came back and they said, okay, we've, we've done Disney, we've done Universal, you know, we're thinking about doing something else. What do you think? Um, you know, that sort of led me to want to become an expert at other things. So mm -hmm. I plan trips all around the world. Um, I plan trips all around North America, the Caribbean, Mexico, Canada, Asia, Europe, you know, anywhere you can think I've done every major theme park you could imagine, cruises, all inclusives, all that kind of stuff. So I help with everything. <laughs> and so now I know you said before that Disney used to be your kind of like your niche or your specialty. Do you kind of still play heavily in the Disney area or a little bit? Yeah. You have like a good mix now. Yeah. So you know, Disney still is my biggest, my biggest destination, you know, mm -hmm. and when I say Disney, I mean, Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line Adventures by Disney, the whole Disney product. Yep. And I think that's um, a, an important clarification because I think especially, I mean, for me on the East Coast, a lot of people think Disney, Disney World, or people on the West Coast think Disney, Disneyland, but you can do anything under that whole Disney like right. umbrella. Right, exactly. And that's so, you know, when I say Disney, I don't just mean Disney. I'm in New York, so everybody here when I say Disney thinks Disney World. Yep. Um, but no, it's it's all of the Disney destinations, Alani, Hilton Head, Zero Beach, Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, Adventures of a Disney. Those are the seven products that all fall under that Disney destinations umbrella. 
that still very much is what I specialize in. It's just that, you know, focusing on that so heavily in the beginning of my career has then led me to transition to also do other things on top of that. You know, it's given me the opportunity to partner with other brands and learn more about, you know, other things that have a similar level of service or, you know, an all-inclusive that might give my clients that, you know, really special kind of feel, um, you know, that they would get at Disney, but it's not at Disney. (laughs) Yeah. And do you feel like you have a lot of people that do Disney and Universal when they go down to Disney World? I get a lot of people that I like to call first timers or haven't been in a long timers. And those Mm -hmm. are people that, you know, are in my age range, um, who maybe haven't been since they were a kid or a teenager and now they're having kids. And so they want to bring their kids, but they haven't yeah. been to Disney in 20 years. Like it's very different. It's a whole different the world. You, were yeah. there, you basically have to pretend like you've never been there before. So I get those folks and you know, those folks tend to just be like very, we want to go to Disney. We want to do the parks and that's really it. And then I get my repeat clients who have, you know, sort of done that already and they're like, maybe we want to split our stay this time. And then, you know, from there, I also get clients that are like, well, we've done the split stay. Now we just want to go to Universal. And I think it's interesting to sort of watch that progression. They'll always go back to Disney, but, you know, they, they'll throw some Universal, just Universal trips in there. So it's, I, I love Universal. I have nothing but good things to say about them. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I am not a universal hater. Yeah. <laughs> Some Disney people are universal haters. Oh, big time. Um, and <laughs> yeah. And I am, I'm not one of them. I love universal just as much. Yeah. I'm someone who we go like, obviously we do Disney world a lot. And then I would say every couple of years we do kind of like sprinkle in Dis- universal. And it's usually with my brother. And then this, one of these upcoming trips that I have, my, one of my best friends was like, can we do universal fleet? at least a day would that be okay and I was like yeah sure and especially we did the Velocicoaster when we went in September uh-huh. and I was like I would go just for that like that yeah. ride was <laughs> unbelievable and I was like literally so I still oh. I still haven't ridden Velocicoaster oh my god don't tell anybody um because everyone's always like it's so fun I'm like I wouldn't know um it's because of, you know oh, it's worth it the pandemic yep can do um another trip there because yeah. it's been a couple years for me And I think it's one of those places too, similar to Disney. If you haven't been in a while, you almost forget how cool it is, how fun it is. Even all the other Jurassic Park rides, I was like, oh man, I haven't been on this one in like such a long time. And so when Meg was like, hey, would you mind doing Universal for a day? I was like, yeah, of course. Like we just had a blast when we went. (laughs) Yeah, it's fun. So, so much to do. I love it. So if you had to think about vacation planning, Disney or not, what would be some of the top things that you feel like people either need to know, need to consider, need to think about when they decide they want to work with someone like yourself? Yeah. The biggest thing I always tell people is not every travel agent is going to vibe with every client and vice Mm. versa. And that's fine. Yeah. You know, we try our very best to plan the perfect vacation for every family, you know, every one of our clients. And, you know, sometimes things aren't perfect. Like we're human, they're human. Um, you know, I am not a superhero by any stretch of the imagination. So I can do whatever, I will do whatever I can within my power to make sure your trip is amazing. Mm -hmm. And in that is that I work really hard to set my client's expectations. Working with a travel agent for the, after the client travels. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I do many, many hours of work and then I don't get paid. And, you know, a lot of times it's for totally understandable reasons, right? 2020 was a disaster. Yep. You know, we worked countless hours, you know, to cancel trips. And I sat on hold eight hours a day for a week straight. Oh, I can't even imagine. You know, trying to cancel and rearrange things. And it was totally understandable. But, you know, that said, we are humans and there's nothing I hate more than when, you know, a client just like ghosts me. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like somebody will reach out and, you know, want to work with me and then I won't hear from them again. So, you know, if you want to work with a travel agent, make sure that you're committed to working with them. And if it's not working out for some reason, be upfront and honest with them about why, because if something that's within their control, you know, 
be upfront with them and, you know, hopefully they can work with you to fix whatever the issue is. If it's, you just don't want to work with them because you're not taking the trip anymore. You've decided you, you know, want to wait a year, whatever it is, be upfront and honest with them and explain that to them. Because Mm -hmm. when I don't hear from people, I just assume it's because they hate me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's so, literally it sounds like a like dating like just be yeah. upfront and honest <laughs> ghosting is the worst as a yeah. single human in 2022 I can promise you ghosting is never the right answer just be yeah. upfront and honest and especially like you said you guys are putting up so much work up front that you're not gonna you know get compensated for until after the fact which like you said totally makes right. sense but you also should appreciate the work that is going in up front before the vacation's even happening. Yeah, yeah, because pretty much everything I we do is way in advance of that trip even happening. I mean, it's booking, you know, a, a year out and then, you know, dining 60 days out and, you know, helping book airport transfers and stroller rentals and wheelchair rentals and like, you know, a million other things that you don't even think about. And then all of that happens only for somebody to, you know, decide not to to go through with the trip for some reason, you know, or decide just not to book even after you've done like hours of research and stuff like that. So it's a two-way street. Like I try to get back to my clients super quickly. If I don't reach out to me, I think what is most in personalities mesh well together. Mm-hmm. Um And, you know, not every person is suited to book with a travel agent. And that's fine. Yeah. You know, you you don't know what you don't know until you know it. Absolutely. And And I think what you talked about in the beginning, too, of having a call with someone probably saves a lot of that time, too, and making sure, like you said, you kind of vibe, you get a good yeah. kind of relationship built, and then go from there. So that sounds like that would be actually great. So if you are going to book with someone, go through that almost kind of like initial consultation call and chat with them right. and make sure that's what you really want to do. Exactly. It's like going back to dating. It's that yep. first, you know, you meet for coffee before you commit to the whole meal and, yep. and, you know, then never hear from them again. And really that initial call is the most important one. You know, I do, yeah. I do other calls with my clients. You know, I try to do a call before dining. I try to do a call, you know, a few weeks before their trip. So, you know, I do other calls, but that first one is where I'm going to learn, you know, your kids' likes and dislikes, all of their allergies, you know, what, your husband hates what kind of food your mother-in-law dislikes. Like I'm going to, that's where I'm going to learn all that like nitty gritty stuff that I'm going to remember. That's going to help me like down the road as we're planning stuff. Absolutely. And now you just mentioned too, that some people are suited to work with a travel planner and some aren't. What, is there like one or a couple of specific like deciding factors where like you are the perfect candidate for working with a travel or vacation planner? Um, you know, I, most of my clients come to me because they're super busy. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just planning a Disney trip is unlike planning anything else because yeah. there's just a lot that goes into it. And so a lot of my clients will come to me initially because they'll say, I looked at the website and I got so overwhelmed and I just yeah. do not have time to go through all of these resorts. And I don't know what an animal kingdom is. And <laughs> please just explain it to me. And so you know, those are the people that come to me that need the most help. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there are my clients that are like, I know exactly what I want. I just don't have time to deal with it. I don't have time to get up at six o'clock in the morning to make my dining. I don't have hours to sit on hold with Disney to make adjustments. Here is what I want. I'll call you when I need help. Yeah. So really those are like the top two groups of people that will come to me. It's the people that are short on time or just generally overwhelmed. You know, and then there are people that understand that, you know, I am there to help with everything. And, you know, maybe you've done hours of research already yourself and you understand Genie Plus, you know, things go sideways. So like, those are my sort of top three kind of clients. I love it. And especially with how much things have changed recently, like you said, Genie Plus, Lightning Lane, things that are coming and changing and going away as fast as you can spell Disney is happening. Mm. So that is incredible to even just have the re- a resource like yourself that can answer those questions. Because I know even in starting this podcast with a lot of people, it was like, everybody does Disney differently. Everybody's going to want to yeah. do things differently. So like, here's all the info you need to know, because there's a lot. And having someone <laughs> like yourself, so you can say, you know what, let me take that off your hands. I think that 
taking away that overwhelm and that stress is actually what's going to allow people to have a better time too. Exactly. Because they can say, you know what? Lauren's got me. Like I said, you got their back. You'll be able to take care of the things that'll cause the additional stress that you don't need. Yep. So yeah, that's, exactly. that's huge. What would you say is the biggest benefit or perk for someone to book with a vacation planner? Probably going back to what we just talked about is just the wealth of knowledge. You know, I, I do not claim to know everything because every now and again, something comes up and stops me. Um, So I don't claim to know it all, but I know a lot. And I've had a lot of situations come up over the course of the past five years. So I know how to handle a lot of things that could go wrong. Um, You know, a couple of weeks ago, I had clients that were leaving from Memphis and they had an ice storm and they couldn't get out for two days. And so they called me from the airport and they were like, what do we do? And I was like, I got this. I'll call Disney and take care of it. Now you've been through a global pandemic. (laughs) You know how that's all going to go. Like who knew that that was going to be a case? I mean, that's really, COVID is really um, what throws me because I don't have answers to questions that people ask me about, you know, policies and things like that. Like I'm learning in real time with stuff like that. Which is again, also changing often too. Oh yeah, constantly. But I have historical knowledge. So I've Mm -hmm. been doing this for long enough where, you know, I sort of been in most problems. I can tell you, you know, what restaurant I think is going to be the best for your family. I can tell you what resort I think is going to be the best for your family. So really it's that historical knowledge that I have of the Disney product just in general. Um, But then it's also the fact that I do stay on top of all the new changes. So when a new restaurant is opening, I'm going to email my clients and say, Hey, this restaurant is opening. It's opening for booking on this day. Do you want me to jump on and try to make reservations? Do you want to try to do it? When Space 220 opened, I started a group text with my clients who were trying to book it themselves because a few of them, you know, they like to do their own dining. So we had a group text going and like, as things were popping up, we were texting each other and like all really excited as everyone was getting reservations and stuff like that. So, you know, I I will be your troubleshooter, your cheerleader. Um, I will cry when you send me pictures of your kids smiling uh, <laughs> um, yes. you know at their favorite character and stuff like that um so you know you you know that you have somebody on your side who wants the best trip possible for you yeah i love that and <laughs> what would you say is your favorite disney planning pro tip um okay so i have two okay One is one that I have, if you follow me on any sort of social media, I talk, I say it all the time. I say it at least four times a year and probably people are like, Lauren, get it. But it's (laughs) book early. Yep. Walt Disney World especially is the type of vacation that needs to be booked as early as possible. And there's a few reasons, right? Like you want to have the best chance of getting your desired resort and room category. Um, You want to book well enough in advance that you've got time to think about your dining Um, but also you have enough time to make payments towards your trip. You know, you spread Mm -hmm. that, you know, payment out a little bit longer and it also gives us more time to develop a relationship where, you know, by the time you go on your trip, I know everything there is to know about your family. (laughs) They're like, Lauren, you coming or what? (laughs) Yeah. um, I have had multiple families be like, we wish you came on your trip. And I'm like, I wish I came on it too. It sounded great. (laughs) (laughs) especially my clients who book like crazy crazy baller vacations I'm always like man you guys had a great time didn't you (laughs) wish I was there so yeah so number one is to book early and then number two is and I'll say this more than once it's setting realistic expectations before your trip even happens absolutely because you know I can plan the perfect trip for you and then something happens where it all falls apart like my client that I talked about whose flight got canceled they had to show up two days later so those two days that they had planned were gone yeah you know and we were able to rearrange some things but like not everything was able to be rearranged so you know you've got weather delays you've got someone is not doing well with the heat you've got sensory overload with the kids anything like that can pop up and just completely change your trip Mm -hmm. and you know we say pack your patience and don't build up an expectation of this perfect magical experience where nothing could possibly go wrong yeah that should be like a button pack your patience right I might crystal my agency owner said it to me earlier today I was like I'm gonna use that later Pack your patience. I really yep. like that. Make it as a pin. Um, send it with like their itinerary. Right. <laughs> mail it to everyone. I think it's going to be my mantra for 2022 because, you know, with everything that we're dealing with, with, you know, people getting sick at the last minute, 
oh yeah delays cancellations all sorts of craziness not everything is gonna go as planned and that's okay yeah I hope that it's not your last Disney trip but if it is you're gonna have as great of a time as you possibly can yeah it's not gonna be perfect I mean we've all been there we've all had a moment at Disney where we just needed a moment yeah (laughs) because it's a lot (laughs) <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Especially if it's a trip that, like you said, you haven't been in a long time. It's your whoever's first trip. Right. I know even for me, like being one of the quote unquote, like, you know, Disney friends for people, I sometimes feel pressure. I'm like, okay, I need to, we need to make sure we do this and we do this and we do that. They haven't been in a yeah. long time. Like you said, it's this buildup that one, you can't guarantee is going to happen. Two, just adds an extra layer of stress that you don't need. Like if you just let it happen, my sister yeah. and I talk about that a lot because we love to just talk about magic moments at Disney, but we mm-hmm. always are like, you know what? Just let it happen. It's going to happen. But if exactly. you try to force it, it won't. Exactly. And we took my son twice when he was, had just turned a year and right before he turned two. And that was 2017, 2018. And we were planning to go again in 2020. Well, Obviously Surprise. that 2020 trip didn't happen and we kept pushing it off and kept pushing it off and kept pushing it off and it didn't happen until late 2021 and so by that time he was five and so our last trip when he was two he was just a little nugget sitting yeah. in the stroller he had no opinion <laughs> on anything yeah he was going with the flow so my husband and I basically it felt like it was just a trip just the two of us with this tiny person tagging along and then this last trip my son was like, I have opinions about what I want to do. Yeah. We were like, wait, what? You what? <laughs> and so, you know, me, the person who is like rope drop, get to the parks early, stay until fireworks. And then at, you know, noon, my son is like, I want to go to the pool. And I'm like, dude, we've only been here like three hours. What do you mean you yeah. want to go to the pool? So for me, I had to take my own advice <laughs> yeah. halfway through my trip and just be like, you know what, Lauren, let it go. You are not going to make a single rope drop on this trip. And that is fine. You are going to leave the parks every day to go to the pool. And that is fine because we honestly had the best trip from beginning to end. We just, we killed it. Like we had so much fun. Um, but that was because like day, whatever it was, three it was pouring rain and we tried we really tried we went to animal kingdom we did the safari but we were like completely drenched the stroller is completely drenched my son was like mom I'm cold I'm miserable (laughs) and that was the point where I was like you know what we're gonna go back to the hotel we're gonna ride the monorail we're just gonna go and chill somewhere for a while and like I'm not gonna try to push us to do a, a rainy park day yeah And so that was sort of like the light bulb moment for me where I was like, I should practice what I preach. Yep. I have two (laughs) questions about your trip as I'm thinking about it. Oh, sure. One, how was the safari during the rain? Because I've heard that it's actually a really fun time to do the safari. There's so many more animals out and actually like playing and enjoying the rain. Yeah. So actually what had happened was first, we rode Expedition Everest, which was a nightmare. We were getting oh. pelted by rain. It felt like I felt That's like a tough one in the rain, I like think. tiny needles. It was not <laughs> fun. We rode it again a few days later, and my son was like, that was way better. I was like, I know. But so then we, we were like, let's go to the safari because at least it's covered. So like we won't be getting hammered by this rain. And it was great. We had a great time. Like oh, the animals good. were loving it. The lions were like rolling around in the rain. So it was definitely a more uh, fun experience than, you know, your typical safari. Yeah. It was definitely a little, the animals were definitely out there a little bit more. So that was pretty cool. I love it. Now, if I remember correctly, I remember seeing on your story, did you stay in the Incredibles rooms at the Contemporary? Okay. I yeah. So. so we, yeah. So we actually did a split stay on this trip. I am a big fan of split stays. Love it. Unless you're trying to do a split stay for like just one night and then, not it really depends on the reasoning but I love split stays because it gives you the chance to see two different resorts stay in two different areas Mm -hmm. um you know if your trip is longer than like five nights uh then you know split stays are usually the way to go so we um stayed at the contemporary first in the main tower in a club level room and it was a great experience the incredible rooms are so cute my son died when he walked in he didn't know about the Incredibles rooms he kind of tried to keep that a secret from him even though he religiously watches room tours on YouTube rooms of the contemporary they look beautiful. like bright and fresh yeah I just I love the contemporary location but I never really liked the rooms they always for a 
resort called the Contemporary. They always felt very like drab yeah. and dark to me. I mean, at one point, maybe that was considered contemporary, but certainly not in 2021. So we loved it. We had a great experience. Club level was fantastic. Could not, I have zero complaints. And then we moved over to Riviera, which I also have zero complaints about. We had a great time there to standard view room. And if you don't know, the standard view rooms are actually the way to go at Riviera because you actually have a chance of oh, being able to see Epcot and fireworks. Oh. The preferred view at Riviera looks the opposite side of the resort. So it looks at like Caribbean Beach and the Skyliner and the pool. And it's a beautiful view, don't get me wrong. But if you stay standard view, you have a chance. It's not guaranteed because you could be looking at dumpsters yeah. <laughs> but you have a chance of looking at Epcot and so for me it's worth that chance because we had a great view actually um, we could see you know harmonious from our room pretty well like we could Amazing. see the points of light on the sphere at night so it was really really cool so we had we just had a great trip oh that sounds amazing because I remember I think you were one of the first people that posted the Incredibles rooms because I feel like it was like shortly after they opened and I feel like nobody was posting them. I was like, I need to see. I love the Incredibles. I was like, I need to see what they look like. And I just closed on DVC at Bay Lake Tower. So I'm like, I uh -huh. need to like get some more contemporary Bay Lake Tower vibes to like get me excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, cannot beat the location there. Like I truly yeah. hadn't stayed at the contemporary in a while. And so I was excited to stay there again and give it another shot now that the rooms were new. And it's, it's definitely moved up the food chain for me. I love it. Now let's talk a little bit about our kind of like main topic for today, which I'm excited to get your, yeah. your take on, which is large family and like multi-generational group planning. Because yep. I get a lot of questions about planning and where to stay, where to go, where to eat, all that stuff. Yep. And again, with the podcast, that's what's so fun is like all these people that either do things differently, planners, you guys can kind of like talk about how to actually do it the right way. Yeah. And we can say, and go talk to Lauren because she's got you covered. <laughs> but I feel like a lot of people lately have been doing a lot of big trips. And it's yep. everyone from like, you know, the grandkids who are, you know, in their single digit ages to the parents, to the grandparents that are in their, yep. you know, 60s or 50s even and above. And yeah. like you said earlier, the level of sensitivity, stimulation, oh, patience, yeah. all those things is wildly different. So Absolutely. what are some of the things that as a planner you would say people need to really think about, consider when they're saying, okay, we're going to do a family trip and it's either a big trip or it might have that multi-generational aspect to it. There's a few things. The first, and it's sort of what I talk to all my clients about, but you know, special considerations for sure for a multi-gen or large family trip. And that's where to stay, mm -hmm. how long to stay, and how to sort of plan out your park days and things like that. Like those are the big main things. And where to stay is probably the most difficult decision, especially when you plan a big trip like this. So when I was talking before about booking early, so sometimes I'll have people come to me and they want to book like four or five rooms and I can't get them four or yeah. five rooms at the same resort. And it's just mm. because the week that they're choosing is a busy week or, you know, yeah. they're looking two months from now or something. So, you know, the hardest part is always going to be where to stay. So I have a few things to talk about that. First thing that we sort of go through is like, are we looking at putting each family in their own room or are we looking at larger villas or suites to accommodate everybody? It's really important for people to know that Disney doesn't guarantee connecting rooms. Mm. Only in very rare cases does Disney guarantee that two rooms will be connecting. So if it's crucial, like make or break for your trip for grandma and grandpa to be in a room that connects to, you know, a room with their daughter and her kids or something, we need to be looking at a larger villa or a suite because Disney will not guarantee a connecting room in that situation. We can request it certainly, but it's not going to be a guarantee. So that's, sort of the biggest hurdle is always mm. trying to narrow down those dynamics of where are we staying? How are we breaking the group up into rooms? And 
you know, does the resort that we're looking at fit the budget of everybody in the family? Yeah. Or even is it a positive that they can't guarantee you have a connecting room either? Well, (laughs) I mean, for some people, it's not a big deal, but I've had clients that have said to me, it's absolutely imperative that my parents be in a room with a door that connects to ours so that, you know, they can watch the kids at night. And I'm like, I totally get it. We're looking at a two- bedroom villa so that's you know sort of the first thing it's not necessary if it's a huge family group and you know you're all kind of coming just to hang out at disney you don't necessarily need to be at the same resort Mm -hmm. um there are plenty of resorts that connect by monorail boat skyliner sister resorts that are right next to each other like port orleans riverside and port orleans french quarter where you know maybe you've got a family of five that needs to be in riverside but grandma and grandpa want the quieter atmosphere of French Quarter. And so you put mm-hmm. grandma and grandpa at French Quarter and the rowdy kids over at Riverside. Yeah. And it's sort of like the best of both worlds, but you're within walking distance of each other or, you yeah. know, a boat's ride away. Meet up for those um, beignets. So- uh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't been back to Port Orleans since it reopened, but Ugh, next so time I'm good. down there and it's open, I will be stopping by to get some. So that's like the biggest hurdle. And then, you know, when we're talking multi-generational and we're talking, you know, grandma, grandpa, or even great grandma, grandpa, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe are in their eighties. Are they down for a seven day Disney trip? Yeah. Or are you guys going first and then they're meeting you, you know, part of the way through and only staying for four days because it's a long time with a lot of walking or maybe they're coming for the whole time, but they're not doing as many park days as you. You know, the family's getting a a six day hopper and grandma and grandpa are only getting a three day or a four day or something like that. Actually sitting down and thinking through the logistics of something like that is always going to be the first step. And I have plenty of families that are like, we're staying at the same place. We're doing all the same things. And that's that. And that's great. But that doesn't necessarily work for every family. Yep. When we just went in December, we even did that where it was me, my mom, my sister, brother-in-law and the kids. And my mom, it was, you know, a lot of walking and she was like, you know, know that I'm going to do all the parks. So we were like, okay, where can we stay that's actually going to have a nice pool and a great place for her to go do some stuff if she's not going to come to the parks for the day too. So keeping that in mind too, we stayed at the Swan and my sister and brother-in-law were at the boardwalk. So we were like, that's perfect. She can hang there. She could walk to the boardwalk and get a snack or do what she wants to do. So there was also enough for her to do on a a non-park day for her. That she still exactly. felt like she was on vacation and having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. When we uh, when we went for Daniel's first birthday, so our first trip with him back in 2017, my mother, my sister, my father, and my father-in-law all came with us. And we had a similar thing where, like, my dad and my father-in-law were like, we're done. Yeah. We're done walking. <laughs> we're going to go sit on a bed first. And, you know, we kind of had to just be like, okay that's fine um and we stayed at wilderness lodge so we were like go back go sit in the lobby yeah. hang out relax um and it, it worked out really well but uh yeah not everybody has the same marathon mentality for disney yeah you know and that's it's definitely important to think through that logistical stuff absolutely and i think one of the big lit- or small your group is is dining so oh what, yeah what tips do you have for people that need to book a large reservation, or even I guess a better question too first would be, what would you consider to be a large group for a reservation that like, hey, if your group is this size, it might make it challenging for you. So sadly, a lot of the restaurants are still operating on the the COVID protocols Mm -hmm. where, you know, they've reduced the number of large tables. So even though a restaurant, you like Google it and, you know, let's say a restaurant at Google says that their max capacity at a table is 10, they may only have one table for 10 in the whole restaurant. Mm. So it's definitely tricky. Any party size six or higher is going to be a little bit of a challenge. Um, Once we're talking like eight, nine, 10 and up, we're definitely in the realm of we probably are going to have to split your dining party. So here's how I advise all of my larger groups on dining. I will go through your list of reservations with you. I will tell you what restaurants I think are going to be a challenge. Disney Springs is always a really good bet for larger groups because Mm. they are not Disney owned restaurants. So they don't have to abide by Disney policies. Uh Um, So you, a lot of times will find 
those restaurants in Disney Springs can easily accommodate 10 or 12. And you also can find a lot of times reservations on open table, or it's also easy to call some of the restaurants to get reservations yeah. for larger groups down at Disney Springs. But then when you're looking at like parks and resorts dining, like I said, anything, you know, seven, eight or higher is going to be a challenge. So what I usually say is we're going to do the best we can to split your group up into multiple parties. So if you're a party of 12, you know, that might be six and six, that might be four, four and four. And we're going to try to make those reservations as close as possible. So if you're four, four and four for dinner reservation, I'm trying to make them six o'clock, six o'clock, six, 10, or six, six o five, six fifteen. Like I'm trying to get them all within 15 to 20 minutes of each other. And then what we advise is to go to the restaurant 15 minutes early. So if the first reservation is at six, show up at 5.45, you check in with the hostess and you say, hey, you know, here are our three reservations, but we're all traveling together. Is it possible for us to be seated together? And for the most part, the restaurant will do their best to put you all together. Yeah. When I was there in May of 2021 with my agency, we were a party of 12 and we were able to be accommodated pretty much everywhere. The exceptions were Nomad's Lounge in Animal Kingdom because they just didn't have a table to fit us. Four little tables, to be honest. I don't remember if we were three or four at a table. But we were all at these little tables kind of clustered together. And it was great. We were all moving around and like, yeah. you know, swapping seats and hanging out. And it, we had a great time. And then at The Wave, which no longer exists, it's now Steakhouse RIP. 71. Yeah, RIP. <laughs> but I did eat at Steakhouse on my last trip and it was really good. Ooh, Very much enjoyed it. I got that coming up. I'm um, excited. Yeah, it was a it was a nice experience. Was it like the best steakhouse I've ever been to? No, but was it a solid option within walking distance of Magic Kingdom? Yes. Love it. So at the wave, you know, they had to get a manager involved because the largest table really only sat 10. And they're like, we can make it work if we put a chair on the end because it was like those round, those half moon kind of booth oh, type yeah. things. And they're like, we can make it work if we put a chair at the end and you guys squeeze. And we're like, we're fine with that. Yeah. So, you know, they will try to make it work. It doesn't always happen. And it goes back to that setting expectations mm -hmm. thing that I was talking about earlier, where we can try really hard to do everything we can beforehand, but what happens when you show up is what happens when you show up. And so, you know, maybe that's the night that you guys, you know, swap tables halfway through or something like that like you tell the kids halfway through dinner grandma and grandpa are gonna switch and come sit with us or whatever yeah uh, whatever needs to happen but you know dining is a challenge for even the <laughs> smallest parties yep you I've know, tried to I've book for one and I've had a hard time where I'm like scratching my head that I can't find a reservation yeah um and then I like this morning I did dining for a family of seven and it was fine with the exception of sci-fi, I had to split them at sci-fi, which was to be expected because sci-fi, I'm pretty sure the max you can book at sci-fi right now is four. It might be six, but I'm pretty sure it's four. So I had to split them at sci-fi and I weirdly had to split them at La Hacienda in Epcot. I thought I was going to be safe there, but I was not. But it was fine because their dining times are within like five minutes of each other. I actually think their La Hacienda ones are at the exact same time. I think it's they're both at six o'clock. So, you know, I'm sure it will work out. If they can make it happen, they will. Usually exactly. in like any, any realm. They don't want your angry family of 12 <laughs> standing at the podium yelling at a cast member. So right. they're going to do whatever they can to try to get you guys together. And like I said, in most cases, it works out. It's been a handful of exceptions where, you know, for whatever reason, like the party size just couldn't be accommodated. Yeah. But that's definitely one of the hardest parts about planning a large group trip. And Part of that, part of what I also try to recommend is to only try to do one, one sit down dining reservation together as a group per day, yeah. because your chances of getting a breakfast all together and a lunch all together and a dinner all together are like, it's like the slim. Disney lottery. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It's like something's going to go wrong at one of those reservations. So, you know, try to do like either a breakfast or a dinner or whatever's really important to the family that day that you really want to be all together because otherwise too you're spending a lot of time eating with a big group like it gets yeah. it takes longer for your food to be served it takes longer for like the kids to eat so you know you're spending maybe two hours at a meal so unless it's you know a super important character breakfast or something I usually recommend dinner but try not to overload dining reservations try to sort of keep it 
flexible. You know, quick service is great. I have so many recommendations for quick service places. Part of that too is that like nobody's kids all eat at the same time. Yeah. Right? Like the teenagers don't want to eat dinner at five o'clock with the little kids every night necessarily. Yep. Like they're like, I, I want to, you know, eat dinner at seven and go back to the park for fireworks. I don't want to be eating dinner at 430. Yeah. So part of that also is knowing your family and knowing, you know, okay, we can't push this to do, you know, five early dinners in a row. Yeah. We can do two early dinners and a breakfast and maybe a lunch and that'll be fine. And everybody will have a great time. Yeah. Now, before we get to our last two sections, I know you said like setting expectations, try not to overwhelm yourself. I think all your dining tips were just like spot on for literally any size, but especially (laughs) a big one. Any last tips? Yeah. I mean, I've said it a bunch of times. It's really, it's really that the whole setting your expectations to a manageable level and understanding that your family is going to have a fun trip no matter what happens. Yeah. everything might not be perfect like everyone is going to have their moment at some point and it's just being present enough to say okay this is their moment I'm going to let them have their moment and we're going to go and you know do whatever you need to do so like part of the group has to head back after lunch or mm-hmm. you gotta go take a swim like I had to go take a swim every day yeah. to keep my five-year-old <laughs> from losing his mind Um, Did I want to be at the pool every day? No. But did I have a great time at the pool every day? Absolutely. Um, I learned, I did so much Disney trivia at the pool (laughs) that I had never done You were probably crushing it. Yeah, I was, I'm like standing in the corner of the pool answering all the questions that the kids are trying to answer and the cast member keeps giving me the side eye and I'm like, I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) They didn't know that one. You need to do whatever you need to do to get everybody to a point where they're going to enjoy the trip. And if that means, you know, you've got to abandon some plans, then so be it. Yeah. I always appreciate when I get those calls halfway through a trip where someone is like, listen, we need your help. This isn't working. What can we do? Um, Because I I love that they acknowledge that like, you know, it's real. Like whatever's happening, whatever it is, you know, needs to be dealt with. And so I, and it doesn't need to ruin your trip. In. Right. You can turn so it I'm around always the and change person it to up. Jump in yeah. And be like, all right, you got to go talk to guest services, cancel that dining reservation. Let's do quick service for dinner tonight. Instead, throw the kids in the pool, um, rent a stroller for the seven-year-old who claims she didn't need a stroller, but now is complaining that her legs hurt every day. You figure out what's going to work. But that's one of the great things is people will be able to follow you on Instagram. You give so many tips, like I said, on social media, across Facebook and Instagram. Like I said, you are the person that I feel like I always immediately think about in our Facebook group. (laughs) So people will get all sorts of fantastic information when they follow you from this. So Oh, I just thought of something. Yeah. I just thought of something. And this is actually, uh, this is a huge one. And it's going to sound so dumb. I'm ready. But when you are planning a trip with multiple rooms and I have called in to request I've called in to to link you all with a travel with number I've called in to request that your rooms be near each other a crib for the baby a medical fridge for grandma I've done all that stuff do not do online check-in because if you check in online all of those notes that I have put on your reservation will disappear into magic mickey land I don't know what happens to them interesting but it has happened so many times to my clients that they show up at a resort and they're like, they're saying we don't have a crib request. And I'm like, no, I promise you, I have called and checked on it three times. You have a crib request. And then I'm like, wait, did you do online check-in even though I told you not to? And they're like, oh yeah, we got the alert on the flight down. We thought we would just do it. And there is the problem. So for whatever reason, the way the Disney system works, whenever you do online check-in, it wipes out all those notes on the reservation. And it takes those requests that you put when you check in online and uh, prioritizes that over what I've called in, unless like you're planning to arrive at, you know, two in the morning or something crazy like that. And then maybe, okay, that's a good reason why to do it. You know, for the most part, it's just way better to leave everything as it is and then go talk to a cast member and say, hey, my travel agent set up a travel with number. Here's the number. Here's our request. You know, were you able to get us close together? And all that kind of stuff, because the room assigner is going to see my notes and see, you know, that you guys are all connected and hopefully try to put you all together. 
doesn't that's always huge. happen. But yeah, so that is actually a really, I'm glad I remember that. That's actually a really big one. And it's one of those ones that like, no matter how many times I tell people, they still forget. So I still, I'm going to like, I'm going to make two buttons. It's going to be pack your patients and don't do online check-in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you requested anything, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> exactly. If those are the two things you take away from your conversations with me, let it be those two things because I've had more problems arise from online check-in than honestly anything else. Oh, that's wild. Cause I feel like, and maybe because yeah. I've never done any kind of like special requests or anything like that. It's been so easy. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's, and you know, I've done trips by myself where I haven't made any yeah. requests or anything. And I've done online check-in and it was fine. And you know, I would say for the vast majority of people, it's fine, but when you show up and your magic bands don't work or mm-hmm. you show up and you're told you don't have park tickets oh. or it, in the days of the dining plan, I used to get clients that showed up and they were like, you don't have a dining plan. And I'm like, mm, your reservation says otherwise. I'm sweating um, just thinking about that. <laughs> and it's, it's because they did online check-in. Those are fantastic, fantastic <laughs> tips. So let's jump into speed round of favorites and then we're going to yes. do your favorite magic moments. You ready? Okay. All right. I'm ready. What is your favorite resort? Wilderness Lodge. Oh, I haven't stayed there yet. That's on my, on my list. My second and third favorite changes like constantly, but Wilderness Lodge will always and forever be my number one favorite Disney resort for a variety of reasons. It's just the atmosphere is so different than really anywhere else on property. The monorail is great, but I love a boat. So I love the boats to Magic Kingdom. I love the restaurants there. I have nothing but, you know, great things to say about all of them. And also I have some really good memories from Wilderness Lodge. Like we stayed there as kids. It's the first place my son stayed. My husband and I stayed there when we went to Disney for our first wedding anniversary. So, you know, I have a lot of great memories tied to it. Plus it just being an amazing resort. Top spot will kind of never be taken by anyone else. And that's like a, that's a bold statement. That is going to yeah. forever be your number one. That's probably the one question that's speed round that I will answer confidently. All the rest of them will yeah. be like, oh, well. <laughs> Debatable. All right. How about your favorite yeah. restaurant on property? I probably can't answer this, like truly honestly, because it changes a lot. But the one restaurant that I like to like yell to people to try, because I feel like it's criminally underrated, is mm. Kiffin's at Animal Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. The cast members who work there are absolutely love the restaurant and they love the history behind it so if you yeah. ask any one of them to explain anything like any of the artwork they will you know explain how it is modeled after Joe Rody's sketchbooks from his travels while he was designing Animal Kingdom they sort of took his sketchbooks and like found all these little things and used that to influence the design of the restaurant and then also the food is just really good like yeah. a lot of people are hesitant to try it because they think the menu is a little out there for them and I can appreciate that but there's also some really just solid options on the menu that I think would appeal to pretty much anyone yeah so we've had Katie Vining who's a former cast member mm-hmm. on a couple episodes she worked at Tiffin's she is going to be so happy to hear that she's going to be like <laughs> well, yes tell, tell her that I appreciate Tiffin so much <laughs> I love it all right how about your favorite park Okay, so this recently switched. So it Ooh. used to be Animal Kingdom. For the longest time, Animal Kingdom was my favorite park. Um, but then this last trip that we took, seeing my son sort of just absolutely nerd out over everything at Hollywood Studios, it kind of flipped. So I think Hollywood Studios is probably my favorite park now, if only to watch his reactions to things. Amazing. How about your favorite ride yeah. at each park? Magic Kingdom, it's Haunted Mansion for like nostalgia purposes. Hollywood Studios, it is Slinky Dog. That recently changed. So it good. used to be Tower of Terror. Now it's Slinky Dog. Again, it totally has to do with my son. We rode it like seven times on our last trip. He was so obsessed with it. Yeah. Every, we were, he was like, we're doing Slinky Dog, right? I was like, yeah, sure, I guess. Yeah. You don't want to do anything else? No, Slinky Dog. Okay, fine. All right. Um, that and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, we rode like five times. Animal Kingdom is Flight of Passage and Epcot is boring. Love it. How about, is there any merch or collectible item that you either get every time you go or something that you have that you, it is your favorite? So I had to really think about this because I don't collect any one thing, right? Like I always buy merch and like, I've got, you know, a handful of lounge flies and a handful of ears and like some random Disney jewelry. 
um, and like a million t-shirts, both from Disney and also like small shops and stuff like that. So I don't know that I necessarily have a favorite piece of merch. Mm -hmm. Last trip, when we went with my son, we, him and I built lightsabers on his birthday. Oh, amazing. And so my favorite souvenir is probably the lightsaber that I built because it was you know him and I like my husband my husband loves Star Wars I kind of wanted Daniel and I to have like a little special thing that we did together the two of us and so that's what we did we built lightsabers and so I love my lightsaber amazing and for anybody listening even if you're not a Star Wars person and someone in your group is go or at least when I went with a couple of friends they built lightsabers and I was I was hanging in the back Mm -hmm. even just experiencing it and watching it the whole presentation, the whole workshop is so freaking cool. So promise me that you'll at least hang out if you're able to. Yeah. So if you have a minute, um, yeah. I actually have a fun story about our Savi's experience. So my son's birthday, we like carefully, and this is again, being flexible, carefully curated the entire day, like exactly everything we were going to do. We had breakfast at Topolino's. Um, we went to Hollywood studios. We did a bunch of rides. We went back to the hotel. We like hung out and relaxed. It was a little too chilly to swim. Otherwise we would have swam, but we went back to the hotel and relaxed. We went to Epcot. We ate dinner at space 220. And then we went back to Hollywood studios. Perfect day, right? Perfect fifth birthday, like end of day, like big secret surprise was going back to Savi's to build lightsabers and we had like an 8 30 appointment or something so we're keeping my five-year-old up pretty late past his bedtime but it's his birthday so who cares right yeah we show up to Savi's and there's a big huge line of people and I'm like what is this because I've never seen this before and we basically get to the front and the cast member's like hey the show is down we don't know if we can bring it back up we don't know what to do this has literally never happened before and I was like, okay, well, like, I didn't, got, that, I didn't even you know, know that was a thing. Tiny Daniel here, who like just found out he's about to build a lightsaber and we don't know what's happening. So we actually didn't get to do the show. <gasps> so we didn't get to go inside. We didn't get to do the show. No. Um, we were heavily compensated for our troubles, but we actually built the lightsabers outside. What? Which in retrospect, I'm, you know, it was what it was. We, we went with the flow, but I'm like, you know what? We get to go back. And do it again and build lightsabers again and get the full experience. We didn't get to do the whole thing, but you know what? I still love that lightsaber because it was a memory of a crazy time. And a one-of-a-kind experience that probably no one else has had. I was talking to, uh, because this was when we were, so we had moved to Riviera at this point. So I was talking to one of the cast members, guest services, like in the hotel and I works again. I was like, no, because it's literally never happened before. Yeah. I told her last night it's the first time that the show has gone completely down and they were unable to bring it back up. They were like, we tried resetting it. We've tried everything we can possibly think of. We have no idea what's going on. And like, you could tell that they were really stressed and scrambling. Oh and I was just like, so, you know, somewhere in my Walt Disney World dossier, the file that Disney keeps on me, there is a note about this. And, yep. you know, someday I will be able to say, hey, remember that time my yep. Savvy's reservation didn't quite go as planned? Well, we're coming back. So can we make sure that things are working? And I'm sure there is some good <laughs> Disney pixie dust karma coming your way for being nice to all the cast members as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at that point, it was also just sheer exhaustion. <laughs> we yeah. were just like so defeated. We are like, we're so tired. We just want to build lightsabers. Oh, my gosh. It was still fun. We still had a fun time. It's your birthday. That's what Let's we're doing. Let's do it. I love it. All right. How about your favorite yeah. non-park activity? Probably resort hopping. Yes. So, such a good answer. Like, I, yeah. I like to go visit other hotels, have lunch in one, go have a drink in another, go to the poly and get Dole Whip. Like I like to bounce around and, you know, spend a day just kind of hanging out and seeing what's going on. Yep. I love it. How about your yeah. favorite Disney movie? That answer changes a lot, but like my favorite movie as a kid was Cinderella. So we'll mm-hmm. go with Cinderella. Awesome. And how about your favorite Disney character? Literally any robot or sidekick who doesn't talk. So like Ooh. Wally, R2, Pascal. Like I just love like all the little side characters that have literally no lines but steal the show with just like emotions. Um, but also Wally because he's like the coolest robot ever. Amazing. So how do you feel about Bay- <laughs> Baymax, who's kind of like a little oh, bit of I all the things, but has yeah, like short Again, lines. any robot, 
any robot character. Ugh. Yeah. So underrated. The Max meet and greet we used to be so like I that is one meet and greet that I really hope comes back to its former glory because on my son's first trip he had no idea who Baymax was we went in there to like grab some shade for five minutes because it was like hot that day and he ended up being completely obsessed with Baymax I have so many pictures of my son just like running full force into Baymax like smashing his face and like the character what, and Baymax was just awesome like walking him around and like showing him all the things in his little room and like it was so cute so when we went back a year later we did the thing we did the meet and greet again and again Baymax was awesome like I tried to take a selfie and like in all the selfies Baymax is blinking or his eyes are like half closed because you know you can't take a selfie correctly and again like my son so was just like all over him so in Epcot, where the uh, the character spot, so like the one side was Mickey and Minnie and Goofy and Donald and Pluto, maybe. Yeah. And then the other side was Joy and Sadness and Baymax. <sighs> okay. Yeah. It right. was it was a really good one. Like I really hope that comes back someday. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, last two questions. And this is one of my favorites. What are your favorite magic moments at Disney World? They can either be one that you've experienced as a guest or one that you've been able to create for a guest as a planner. I absolutely love when I get pictures from my clients of like their kids doing like the one thing that they were so excited to do, like whether that was in a previous life, bibbity boppity. Yeah. Um, which fingers crossed that'll be opening soon I really hope yeah but like whether it was their kids at Bibbidi Bobbidi or you know doing whatever ride that they're finally tall enough to do like you know they were finally tall enough to ride um, Space Mountain or something yeah it was their first time love getting those pictures from my clients and knowing that I had some tiny part in like helping create that and I always ask my clients I'm like if you're comfortable sending me pictures and me sharing them on social media please let me know but if not I totally get it and yeah. you know a lot of them will send me pictures and say hey please don't share which is fine it's just I just love seeing like the kids reactions to things and also yeah. the adults reactions to things yeah. because you know I can't tell you especially now with Star Wars how oh, many bet. people have been like all I've ever wanted to do is go have a drink at that bar from the movie and the fact that there's a bar just like it like yeah. you know it was the best day ever and so like I love getting to sort of see all of that I don't know that I can really narrow down my own personal favorite magic moment that I've experienced. My husband and I got engaged at Disney World. Where? Um, so in front of the castle. So the we dream. took our first trip together. Yeah, it was like very cliche, but also it was super fun. We took our first trip in October of 2012. And then we went back again in December because we're crazy. And I... <laughs> Figured we were getting engaged soon, but I did not think he was doing it at Disney World because I was like, he is not that person. And so the day we got engaged was also the night we were going to the Christmas party. And so I had like my little just engaged button and stuff. And so, you know, Dopey's inspecting my uh, ring and like making yes. sure the diamond is good. And, you know, just that entire day was whirlwind of so many cast members like asking me to tell the story. Because they're like, oh, we love Disney proposals. Like, tell us, tell us everything. You know, like that sort of just led to, you know, that was 2012. And now here we are, 2021, 2022. Oh my God. Yeah. Almost 10 years. 10 years of just like, yeah. Making like these crazy Disney memories with my family. You know, obviously like everything about Daniel's first trip, like a thousand amazing things. This last trip that we were on for his birthday, staying club level and seeing like the club level concierge cast members hang out with Daniel and react to him and talk to him and you know just seeing like their faces light up talking to him and stuff really made the trip and I, like I said like this was his first trip most as like a fully formed human with opinions and yeah <laughs> a voice and so I I do this thing and everybody that's with me kind of always like is like oh Lauren anytime I see a cast member with a blue name tag I always tell them congratulations yeah because a blue name tag means that they've won the Walt Disney Legacy Award and it's a really big deal to them and so I always tell them congratulations and they're always like oh thank you so much so on like the second day of our trip my son was like mommy why do you keep telling people congratulations so I explained it to him and then he took it upon himself the entire trip to search for cast members with blue name tags. Aww. And he would like scream across the park. And like sometimes they would hear him and sometimes they wouldn't. And so on the night of his birthday, as we're leaving Hollywood Studios super late, because we've been there for hours and hours, a custodial cast member walked by 
with the pin and Daniel just screams, congratulations. And she went, she turned around, she's like, oh, thank you so much. And I almost missed it, but out of the corner of my eye, I saw her do like a little happy dance oh. because she was so excited that Daniel recognized and I was just like, oh my God. So it was like, uh. not even like a true, like quote unquote magical moment. Like it wasn't even like this, you know, Disney going above and beyond or anything. It was just like a, this tiny interaction. And I was just like, that just like made my entire trip. And, you know, of course my son like said it to one of the concierge cast members and like they had balloons in our room the next day because they were so impressed with him and like they they were amazing and stuff but it was that one specific tiny little moment that like if I hadn't turned my head I would have missed it that like was just like the best like warm fuzzy because in my head I was like yay I'm raising a tiny Disney person <laughs> yeah absolutely and that yeah. probably made that cast member's day right that yeah. is amazing and for everybody listening definitely Keep your eye out for those. I know Katie on one of our backstage episodes talked about that as well and the different kind of like pins okay. that you can get on the name tags. Like there are so many cool things yeah. that you can talk to cast members about. And like you said, teach your kids about them and, you know, have them engage because you'll find some really awesome magic moments that way. Absolutely. Like all the cast members I've interacted with love nothing more than talking about their job. Yeah. And talking about what they love at Disney. Like a lot of times, like, you know, when we were staying club level, they'd be like, what are, what's your agenda for the day? And we would tell them and I'd be like, what do you think? think we should do here yeah. you know they would all be like well you know this is my favorite place to get a snack or you know you have to make sure you go on this ride or whatever and it really is so wonderful when you stop and take the time to talk to cast members Absolutely. and like just find out what they know because we yeah. really have learned so much just from talking to the cast members absolutely and like you said earlier too when you have that different perspective of it's not all about forcing a magic moment it could be something yeah. really simple from talking to a cast member oh yeah anytime we've gotten anything special you know whether it be you know the balloons in the room for Daniel's birthday or a cupcake at dinner anytime we've ever gotten anything special it's always just been from interacting with cast members it's yeah. never just been like an out of the blue you know yep. thing that happened to show up one day like it doesn't it doesn't happen that way it's treating cast members with kindness and respect and taking the time out of your day to just find out how their day is or yeah. you know what their role at the company is or how long they've worked there or whatever and having a conversation and that's where magic moments happen Oh, that is like the perfect way to wrap up the episode. <laughs> so I Absolutely. am going to leave it there. I love that. Now, where can everybody find you on the internet? I am on Facebook and that's Lauren Regan hyphen roads relaxation travel. Um, if you type in my name, you sh it should pop up. I am on Instagram at rtr lauren you also can just find me on our agency's website road to relaxation travel.com or you can send me an email because you know i like e i like when people send me emails more than when they send me dms because i am terrible with dms so my email and it's very easy it's lauren at rtr travel.com perfect and we'll make sure to put all of those into the show notes so that everyone can find and follow you there we are here all the time. So if you have more topics that you want to come back on and talk about, we'll be happy to have you back. Absolutely. Thanks for hanging out today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed our episode with Lauren talking all about the magic of planning Disney vacations. Make sure you're following us on Instagram at Living the KG Life. Subscribe on all of your favorite podcast streaming platforms. We drop new episodes every Monday. So stick around. It's going to be great.